Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and we are already open for business here because today is going to be one of those crazy days where a lot of things are going to be happening with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, in an hour and 20 minutes, all NFL teams can put in claims for players that they want, and basically the Cowboys are the 24th pick. 23 teams have the right of first refusal before any player that the Cowboys put a claim in, and... Um, in which case, if nobody claims a player that they do, that the Cowboys want, then the Cowboys can actually get that person. Now, uh, last week when Tyron Smith got hurt, we ended up doing different um, breakdowns and pros and cons of signing different players from Eric Fisher to uh, uh, um, uh, Jason Peters, Nate Solder. Um, you know, we went down the line of guys that would be possible replacements that the Cowboys could assign as free agents. We didn't go into ones that could possibly trade for. I know the Eagles were hoping that we would trade for Andre Dillard, but sorry, nobody's doing that. Or nobody did that, and they ended up re signing him. Um, but one of the players that the, was rumored that the Cowboys might try and trade for was Alex Leatherwood. Alex Leatherwood. Uh, first round draft pick, number 17 pick by the Raiders in 2021, has been a disappointment for them. He has not lived up to what they would have thought getting the 17th player in the draft. Uh, the guy's six foot five, 312 pounds. He played in 17 games for them um, in 2021, 1,108 snaps. I think he gave up uh, eight sacks and had 11 penalties. So it wasn't a stellar year by any stretch of the imagination. And the Raiders, of course, decided to move on from him. Um, so a lot of people will say he's a bum. Well, at least here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I want to bring into focus some things here. One man's trash could be another man's treasure. And maybe the circumstances just weren't good for him. I don't know. I don't know. You know, you have a 50-50 shot of a guy in the draft, to me, of them being a bust or being a great player. And that doesn't matter what round you draft him in. Maybe the dog just can't hunt. But the Cowboys have had some success on getting players from the Raiders. What I will point out is when you look at a guy who was a first-round talent um, and say Eric Flowers for the Giants, he was deemed a bust by them. I'm not going to say Eric Flowers was a great player, but Eric Flowers has kind of turned it around. He actually played well for Washington after he left there, and I believe is still in the NFL. He is a serviceable guy. The Cowboys, they're bargain basement hunters. They like to get first-round talent on the cheap, which is a reason why I believe that the Cowboys would put up a claim for him. Since he is now a free agent, then they can sign him to whatever they want, which means it won't be a big contract, I believe. Or it will be what is left on his original rookie deal. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. I've got to do some more research on it and find out. However, however, his guaranteed money has already been paid for by the Raiders. Can this guy play? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if he ends up getting here, they end up playing him at right guard. Maybe they end up playing him at right tackle, and maybe they end up having to move Terrence Steele over and so on. But it, it's a possibility. Kick the tires. And for those out there that say, if you sign him, it's the typical Cowboy signing. But I want to read to you something that happened last year that maybe will put this in perspective. The Dallas Cowboys have agreed to a one-year deal with former Detroit Lions safety J. Ron Curse per Michael Gelkin of the Dallas Morning News. Curse agreed to the deal after his visit with the team Wednesday per Gelkin. The 27-year-old has played five seasons in the NFL, his first four with the Minnesota Vikings before signing with the Detroit Lions for 2020. The seven-round pick out of Clemson had 59 tackles in 11 games, seven starts for the Lions. Per Ty Archer of, of, of ESPN, Curse offers depth in the secondary and some position flex and special teams health. When we signed him, we thought, okay, he'll be a backup. He can play some position flex, and he's going to be a special teamer. You do realize that that guy who we signed for under a million dollars became one of the standouts and part of the reason why Micah Parsons was able to become the guy he was because he became the field general. 
he got an opportunity with the Cowboys that fit his set of skills with the right coaching that brought out a lot from him. And because he was able to pick it up and be able to call plays, it gave Micah Parsons the opportunity to be able to focus in on one thing, and that's getting after quarterback's ass. So as we poo-poo a lot of these moves and say that the Cowboys don't, you know, care about trying to win, they may be cheap, but you have to look at some of the moves that they've made that have been pretty good. And I'll bring in one other, one other piece to the equation here. When the Cowboys were rebuilding in the 90s, we all focus in on the Herschel Walker trade and look at the talent that that brought in. But that wasn't the only thing that the Cowboys did. I was blessed enough that last year I got to talk to Jimmy Johnson and ask him a couple of questions. I want to play that because this is exactly how the Cowboys built the offensive line, that great wall of Dallas. And um, the Cowboys and us fans could still learn quite a bit from Jimmy Johnson. You're up and then James Harris. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, let me first say congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, watching that live on television, that raw emotion was just beautiful. Um, I have so many questions for you. I think about the only way I can get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out on the, and go fishing with you. <laughs> but um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke, busted, and fur- thoroughly disgusting to watch. Having gone from the pinnacle down to the depths, what was that like? And the second part of this question would be, I uh, played football at JMU with Charles Haley and knowing the character that he is and all the personalities that you had with the Cowboys, how were you able to mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize, which was winning? Well, you know, first of all, you know, you know, people look back on it and, and they say it was an easy decision to leave the University of Miami. You know, but, you know, we had gone through four straight seasons where we played a national schedule and been on national television every other week and only lost two regular season games. And so we had a powerhouse football team and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a great, you know, group of talent. And then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry is one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm-hmm. You know, but, you know, they had had three straight losing seasons there at the bottom of the NFL at three and 13 because they just didn't have any talent. And, you know, and obviously there were some older players that uh, helped us, uh, you know, in winning our Super Bowls. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, I, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach. And he he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuane at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous stats, staff said get rid of him because he was too fat, Nate Newton. We took a, a <laughs> key right there. pick, a 245-pound offensive guard. I asked Tony, I said, can you convert him to a center? He said, I'll make him into a center. So we moved St- uh, Stepnoski to center. And then we took a seventh-round pick, Kevin Gogan, uh, who had struggled his early years. We moved him to guard and took a third round pick, Eric Williams, at right tackle. So, you know, those players hadn't developed, but Tony Wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line. And so, you know, the combination of having some great assistant coaches and acquiring a lot of talent with 51 trades in five years, we were able to win that Super Bowl. So it was a great feeling. Thank you very much on that. I'll follow up you about Charles Haley. Yes. He's a character. <laughs> he's he is a, a character. character but he loop. is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, you know, Charles and I developed a great relationship after a few uh, rocky roads uh, there early in his career at Dallas. Uh, we had a couple of run ins, but we, we really got together. You know, really, he came in my office after I had berated him a, a couple of times at, at one of the ball games. And he said, Coach, he said, if you will just get on to me one-on-one in your office, he said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I, I love playing for you. He said, but just don't embarrass me in front of the other players. And I said, you know, Charles, I, I may not always be able to do that, but I'll try. But from that time forward, we had a great relationship. And, 
he was a big part of us winning Super Bowls. Thank you very much. And how about them Cowboys? <laughs> I should have traded for that. <laughs> James Harris. 51 trades. 51 trades in five years. Getting an offensive lineman from the Washington Commanders that was deemed too fat. One man's trash is another man's treasure. So maybe Alex Leatherwood, the guy's got the size, six foot five, 312 pounds, um, had enough for people to think that he should have been a first round drafted offensive lineman. Maybe a change of scenery and getting with the Dallas Cowboys would end up being enough to, you know, change the narrative on where he is. Who knows? But the Cowboys have to do something. And if history does repeat itself where the Cowboys find some players that are kind of afterthoughts and turn them into really good players, we could be in good shape. So we'll see what happens. Claim wire start in an hour and 10 minutes. So we'll be definitely keeping up to speed on that one. I'm Mark Holmes, and it's going to be a busy day. I appreciate you guys. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe for the Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to say is...